Kyle Mohan Racing, and today we're talking about rotary exhaust porting. We're doing another technical talk. No, it's not a dick talk. We're getting technical about rotaries. We're gonna talk about porting, uh, exhaust porting to be specific, how port timing can affect uh, rotary performance, um, some of what I like to run in uh, naturally aspirated or turbo applications and why, and just some of my opinion on rotary exhaust porting. And on top of that, a little bit of information about how to mark rotary exhaust for porting, how to use templates, and just generally technical information answering a few questions that came up from our last rotary exhaust video. Let's get into it. Okay, so like I discussed in the last video, uh, whether you've got one of my porting templates or another manufacturer porting template, if it doesn't come pre-located, then they're expecting the end user to know about exhaust port timing and understand where to put it. One of the simple questions I got in the last video was, well, what are good recommendations for naturally aspirated port timing, turbo port timing, or in between? And so this is just my opinion, but based on the years of rotary experience I have and what I've seen, Generally, this is a, a turbo housing we're, we're looking at here, so the exhaust already starts a little big. But generally, if you're going for an aggressive, uh, naturally aspirated exhaust port, you're probably bringing this up, and it will probably be close to touching the bottom edge of the OEM exhaust port. So most of your porting will be moving the port timing up, which will give more overlap. Um, and if you're running turbocharged, uh, aggressive uh, open exhaust same thing these are these are race setups so i'm expecting that you don't have uh, much uh, restriction in exhaust but in turbo we would bring this uh, this port down and uh, that's actually allowing the exhaust to open earlier um, and if you notice by bringing it down very close to this uh, this oem upper edge we're really not allowing uh, the duration or the exhaust port timing to, to stay open much longer, which would increase overlap. On a boosted motor, we really don't need that overlap most of the time. Uh, it's better to go earlier. As you can see here, regardless of which way you go, you're increasing your overall volume very similarly. Um, and so that kind of is just my take on naturally aspirated race versus turbo race. Now, if you're just building a street car, Obviously, this is probably a street car that has no smog. It's not going to pass smog. I make no claims on that. These are race, uh, race porting items. But uh, if it's just a street car, you probably have some exhaust. Uh, you're trying to muffle, keep noise down. Then you're probably going more of a centralized location. You're increasing your overall volume, but you're not making a significant port timing change. Um, so there you go. That kind of answers that question. The other great question I got was, well, how do I mark these and keep them consistent if it does not come pre-positioned. Uh, so we're going to cover that right now. All right, so I like to use Dichem, Dichem, woo, to mark out uh, metal for any type of scribe work. I'm doing it messy. Sorry, I blame the camera. It's not my normal angle. So you just want to get a good, uh, good coating down. The housing needs to be cleaned, acetoned. So the die cam actually sticks. You'll, you'll clean that off later. And uh, there you can see we've got some nice marking on it. All right, now that we've got our blue die cam down, and uh, let's just say we have our porting template. We're starting from scratch. We're just going to go very, uh, very generic, very basic, and just go right in our middle position. We'll take a uh, basic scribe. And just keeping the... Uh, template clamped. You can use uh, clamps if you're worried about keeping it exactly square. I've done this a lot of times, so I'm not too worried about it. And then uh, you can see very easily we've now uh, scribed out our port lines. 
All right, now you're sh I'm sure you're asking, Kyle, how do I transfer this to the other rotor housings? I'm going to show you. So if you've got just a brand new exhaust porting template, you can take your, your rotor housing, put two dowel pins in it, so you've got some type of fixed position alignment. So I've got both of them in there. And then drop a straight edge or ruler across those points and scribe a mark right against that ruler. Now don't get crazy aggressive, I'm talking just a tiny little mark. Use a pen, light scribe. Now that gives you a fixed position that's repeatable. I didn't invent this, I got taught by other rotary guys. And then you can mark your template. And if you look really close, I've got a mark uh, on the side there. And now you can line them up. So that's the trick to repeatable lineup. The purpose of the video, you can see I just put some black uh, Sharpie marks on the side there. And that would be the example. You know, your middle mark could be your, your basic porting. That could be your turbo, that could be your NA, or any infinite combination of possibilities, but that's the point of my porting template. As a race porting template, it gives the user, engine building master, the opportunity to either apply this to their own existing knowledge, timing templates, or create uh, repeatability based on whatever data they do collect. Um, those marks are not perfectly accurate. Like I said, it's just for the video, but uh, that kind of breaks down two of those cool questions that got asked and a little bit of uh, how to use a basic exhaust porting template or the KMR porting template for that matter and why I don't offer a fixed position porting template because to me, this has way more value than one that has a permanent position. All right, so that's been a KMR technical rotary talk. We don't TikTok, we tech talk. I got to make a sticker or something that says that. We'll have fun with it. Feel free to ask those questions. I definitely try to answer them. Unless they're absolutely ridiculous, then I might ignore them. But hey, rotaries, we're brapping. We're building stuff. We got a lot of cool projects in right now. We're going to have some more of this coming up. So make sure to follow KMR, Combo Hand Racing.